Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. It's Sunday morning. This is Lizzie and Justin from Third Space again, back for another one of our um, 160 something turning towards life conversations. And I just want to say welcome to all of you and to all of us. We were talking last week about how the multiple um, layers of this conversation how this conversation begins with a source and then unfolds into something between us that's really unfold, unfolding into something between many, many hundreds of us. So we're really glad that you're, whether you're with us live this morning or listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube or on our um, Turning Towards Life website later, we're so glad that you're one of the many unfolding layers of conversation and you're so welcome to be here with us. Mm. Thanks, Justin. Good morning to you wherever you are. Good morning, Justin. This is a deeply welcome haven of conversation. I've just come out of the kerfuffle of getting ourselves ready and getting into the room and haven't managed to dry my hair and I haven't put any moisturiser on, so my face is a bit itchy, you know, I'm kind of like in a state of dishevelment. And I'm really glad that I can be here in actually maybe maybe people listening are in some state of dishevelment as well and that that's all all right and i am really delighted to bring this source by the amazing john wellwood who is one of my favorite people when it comes to the work of being in relationship with others and he wrote this amazing book called perfect love in perfect relationships and I remember reading it for the first time and thinking, oh my gosh, this is, this is the thing, this is the thing, this is the thing. And then I discovered that he had a poetry book and he has this beautiful, beautiful book filled with things like this, which is the poetry of his inquiry into relationships and what it means. And so this really threw itself at me, this poem about all of us, claiming our royal seats and I'm really glad to be wandering into a conversation with you about it Justin and feeling into what we can discover together about it. So the poem's called Great Perfection by John Wellwood and I'm going to read. So here we go and actually I want I want to see whether each of us can receive this so Justin whether you can receive this as me saying so the first line is you bring the world alive each moment so see if you can receive it as me saying it to you. And if you're listening to us, take a minute and see if you can receive this as you, that this is for you and I'm saying it to you. And I'm going to read it to you. You bring the, the world alive each moment in the freshness of your look, your touch, your waking. Recognize this, your creation at last. It is always arising anew in each moment of looking freshly, letting everything happen as it does without making something out of it. You thought you were cold and hungry, wandering lost in an alien place, but now you can see. This world is your light show, everything shining and shimmering in the blaze of your presence. Be glad then, go forth nakedly and claim your royal seat. Thank you, Lizzie. <clears throat> I will, of course, say more shortly about quite what it was like to have you read that to me, to all of us, but I'm going to do the same. So this is for you, Lizzie. And it's also for all of you and all of us, everyone who's listening. You can take up Lizzie's invitation and hear it again, really specifically for you. You bring the world alive each moment in the freshness of your look, your touch, your waking. Recognize this, your creation at last. It is always arising anew in each moment of looking freshly letting everything happen as it does without making something out of it. 
You thought you were cold and hungry, wandering lost in an alien place, but now you can see. This world is your light show. Everything shining and shimmering in the blaze of your presence. Be, be glad then. Go forth nakedly and claim your royal seat. Mm. <sighs> My goodness. So it's true to say that no one's read this to me before. I've read it to myself, but no one's read it to me. And it feels like the deepest, most essential encouragement to me to hear the words and to feel the impact of it, like to feel seen by a poem as someone else reads it to you. That's how I'm feeling right now. And I can feel the dignity of it, like how it dignifies to hear this. And how it just makes, it makes a sense. It's really, really beautiful. And something about when you were reading it, Justin, just hearing you bring the world alive each moment that is what each of us does, because what, what else is bringing the world alive other than life, which we are? And it just feels like a glorious receipt to hear this. So thank you for reading that to me and to everyone. It's very beautiful. You know, it was such a... <clears throat> It was so moving to hear you read it to me and I'll circle back to that in a moment. But actually reading it to you, Lizzie, was an enormous joy to look you in the eyes and to feel your presence and to be able to say these words mm -hmm. your way. So there is, there's something, there is something very important in the hearing of it and lots happened for me in in the hearing of it and the being in the in the orbit of your attention and your care and your presence as you read to me but i i felt so strongly what a gift it is to be able to say to one another i see the way that you are one who is bringing a whole world into being all the time i see mm. i see you for your aliveness i see you for your presence I see you for the shining something, shimmering something that happens that's quite separate from anything that you do to make something happen in the world, but is here because that you're a, um, a being relating to the world, making a world, touching me and us who are around you, all of that. And it, it made me feel the the gift of being able to that we can give one another these gifts. We can give people we care about these gifts. We can also give people we barely know these gifts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes through words, sometimes through a look, sometimes through the way that we stay open to one another. And that, and that the saying of it, which is so manifestly true, like I see that you are all of this, Lizzie, brings me back into contact with myself also like like we we find the extraordinariness of our humanity and our, of our existence mm -hmm. by really naming accurately to one another what we are yeah and these words are not um they're so different from um i like your hair or thank you for that gift or it was really nice to see you yesterday or didn't we have a good time together mm. there are a they're a different order. They're of a um, life recognizing life kind of order. Yeah. It's a really different place from which to speak to one another. To to say to one another, I can see what you are. I honor I honor the kind of presence in the world that you are. 
that's not to do with my assessments of your usefulness to me or the joy you bring me or the pleasure you give me or the things you know any of that and so hearing it too I felt like John Wellwood wrote this just for me <laughs> because because this line this line and this is how I I was this is how I woke up this morning this is how I often wake up um uh, verse two Mm. You thought you were cold and hungry, wandering, lost in an alien place. Mm. I think I wake up. This is a really familiar place to me. I don't belong. My body doesn't belong. Something wrong is happening. And then the, the consequence of all of that is, oh, and I better get with the program and sort this out really quickly. I have to do something now, but I don't know what it is. I don't know how to find my, I don't know how to act to f sort this out. And this, um, this is just a homecoming. Mm. This is, oh, but it was, how could it be anything other than I belong on a very, I may not know that I belong to the people around me. I may not know that I belong in the work I've taken up. I may not know I belong, but to belong sort of foundationally mm. to existence, how, how could it, whatever is going on, how could it be anything other than that? Mm. And it's very powerful to have you read John Wellwood's words to me and for me to so quickly be able to find my way back to the truth. It was like, oh yeah, I remember. So thank yeah. you. You're very welcome. And I feel like this poem points us into how powerful we are. This world is your light show. Everything shining and shimmering in the blaze of your presence. There's some way that it puts us, it gathers us. I feel gathered by it. Like, I think so much of the time, us humans are kind of scattered in a hundred different ways. And our thinking parts are going 10 to the dozen our anxiousness our being pulled in different directions our kind of thinness gating along and somehow this does this thing for me where it's like I get pulled into the center of my life and somehow become like dense instead of away from myself, like having tentacles that reach too far and being sensitive and worried. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> this is me, this is my world. This is, this is where I stand. And to feel that I'm, it's pointing to the fact that I'm having an impact as to what my world is like. And so, if this world is my light show and when he says in the blaze of your presence it's like my presence is lighting things up my presence is projecting light onto life onto whatever and whatever is here and so what else is there to do other than go forth nakedly and claim my royal seat like just admit the truth I feel like he's asking me to admit the truth of my sovereignty, of you are a powerful being. And it really strikes me that none of our marketing takes account of this. You know, our marketing that we see every day, that the adverts we see, the things that we are told that we need are saying the opposite of this. Implicitly, they're saying there's something massively missing. And so you really need this pair of trousers or you really need this lipstick or you really need this lawnmower or whatever because you've got to, you've got to fill the hole that exists in you. And so in a way, I also feel the relief of this. Po pointing to what's really true, really truest 
but which barely gets pointed to in in the kind of mass cultural norm of what we all think each other is. And so instead of there being an implicit lack, there's an implicit abundance because of our very being, not because of anything we've done or anything we have, but just by the very nature of being, this is true. There's nothing to be done. There's no, in, in this place of acknowledgement, there's nothing to be done, nothing to be achieved, nothing to be sought. It's an acknowledgement of is, isness, what is about me, about you, about everyone. And it makes me feel really hopeful because if each of us would receive this and let it live as a, a way of moving through the world, there's a living acknowledgement of who I am. How generous might we be? How connecting might we be? How intimate might, be, what might we be? How much would we give away if we saw the need? It feels like a, if I stand in this, I can feel the kind of royal generosity, you know, like a, mm a care for all, a care for the land, a care for what holds us, a care for each individual. And it feels very centered and powerful and benevolent. And not from a kind of running away from myself, but just from a, that's what, that's what I take care of. It's quite simple. That's how I feel when I stand there. And also not from Lizzie from a uh, I have to dominate you place. Yeah. So I, I thought in your in your way of talking about what it might be to take up for each of us to know this so that we can take up our own the royal seat that is there for us. But one of the the flip side of the whole there's something wrong with me, there's something missing, I have to fill it, I have to get it, and only then will I be at home, which is the one that a lot of marketing and advertising plays, a lot of our culture plays into. If you feel that way, you'll buy stuff and you know everything that comes from that. <laughs> the flip side of it is, for some of us, for at least some of the time, is that when we can't get filled that way, we try and fill ourselves by, by making ourselves into the sort of distorted narcissistic end of this, which is, well, I must be the king or the queen. I'm the one who matters. I'm the one who char who's in charge. I'll cover up my feeling of emptiness by by puffing myself up into, like, mm -hmm. like because I'm it's the because I'm worth it. It's the distortion of the you know the advertising yeah. because, because I'm worth it. Well, because I, now I can yeah. do what I want. And to feel as you were speaking that are. Really, another way of naming this is, is as we hear these words, feeling and seeing that we are each a unique, we're a unique um, conversation between us and the world around us that only, can only arise because of the particular something that we are right mm -hmm. here. And the world shows up in its particular way here because of the something, the kind of being that I am in relationship with mm -hmm. everything else. So I take up my place among others who are who are as precious and as unique and as exquisite and as necessary. Mm -hmm. And as we could each feel our way into that, then there may be many things for us to attend to. So I, th I thought that you're, I was really touched by your language of care. When we find our way there, then we can take care of what needs taken care of. People are hungry, people are sick, people are suffering. We might be too. Let's see what we can do together to address that. It evokes mm -hmm. that kind of um, stewardship that being in a royal seat is a kind of stewardship, right? You have to care for the things that you are also responsible for. Yeah. But it would undo <clears throat> the terrible suffering that comes from feeling like we are separate from the world and the terrible suffering that comes from feeling like we have to use force to give ourselves any kind of contact with the world instead we could fall into a kind of reciprocity mm. or sort of awestruck reciprocity with one another and as you got talking about intimacy Lizzie I got thinking about 
how often we judge who we will allow ourselves to be close to, who will allow ourselves to be open to, by whether they, like, do you meet my criteria for making me feel like I belong? Do you fill all of these holes? Now I can open myself to you in friendship or in love or whatever. But instead, this way might be, oh, look, there's another being here. How extraordinary. Maybe nothing else is called for mm -hmm. apart from us listening to one another and witnessing one another. Mm -hmm. Life could be really full of joy and wonder that way. Yeah. And it might open us to what's different about, to the joy of what's different about each of us, what's particular about each of us without having to be afraid or having to run from ourselves and from others. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me feel like when you're talking, Justin, like I can see behind like behaviours or the way things appear to me. From this place, I can look behind all of that to the person. It's like an invitation to go beyond what I'm in reaction to almost and to the depths and the implicit world, the, the more subtle world of the person in front of me. So, you know, even if I go back and I'm finding myself running through all my interactions of yesterday with all the people I was with, and then if I run this poem through the day and wonder as to how different I might have been, letting this poem and this invitation be the way that I was encountering the humans, it's a different day. And so I love it that this is just a universal poem. This isn't for a particular someone. This is the nature of humanness. This is what's true about every single person who got born here. That each of us is bringing the world alive each moment. Each of us have a touch, each of us wake. And it's in that, in those normal, ordinary pieces of us that this blazing, shining world is arising in you all the time. And to have everyone be defined as that is a really different world than are you meeting my needs? Are you to my liking? Are you annoying me or not? You know, all of the things. And of course, those things probably will always be there. We have personalities and histories and everything. But this gives us a whole other way of cultivating relationship to others, a way of seeing, a way of understanding a way of relating and it and it really does feel sparkling to me like I can feel the shimmer of it I can feel as I stand in the poem the how, how shimmering the world becomes it's very very beautiful mm. struck me as you were speaking, Lizzie, that when we, when we come at the world with the primary sense of ourselves being something is missing, mm. then it gets us into all kinds of, it explains a lot about the, the kinds of um, difficulties we get into. So I was just thinking whilst you were talking about it, we went walking yesterday afternoon with some really dear friends. Friends who I've known since I was in my teens, people who I really love. And I could feel myself, I could feel as just before we were walking out, the part of me that felt like there was something I need, need to do here. Like, I am going to have to I'm going to have to make some effort here that I don't want to have to make. And it was really, I mean, it was really nothing to do with my very lovely friends who we were walking with. It, it was coming from this place of 
I don't belong, I'm not welcome here. So now I'm gonna have to work really hard to mm. feel like I belong. And that's so different from, I'm about to get to be in the presence of one who is in every moment arising anew everything shining and shimmering in the blaze of their presence and of mine. And then all there is to do really is to be in awe and wonder at one another's presence and in gratitude at the receipt of one another. And you've said this so many times, it's just striking me now. Really we're, we're our wholeness, our inseparability from everything, our the necessary and unquestionable way that we're arising from the world all the time and bringing about a world simply by our presence it can be really hard for us to be in receipt of that. And when we're not in receipt of that ourselves, for ourselves, it's also very hard to be in receipt of it from others. So we have to know it to be true of everyone, including ourselves, in order for this to happen. And as we were walking with our friends yesterday, we're all now in our early and mid fifties and we've known one another since we were in our teens and being in our teens seems like it was last weekend. It really struck me how quick everything is. But I, I think that one of the reasons how quick everything is is partly because it is, but also partly because at least for me, when I'm efforting, when I feel like there's something that has to be done here so I want to keep on saying there are lots of things that have to be done, things for us to take care of. But when I feel like there's something else that has to be done, I have to, you know, to sort of be present. It shouldn't surprise me that life whizzes by because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm using it, I'm burning it up in trying to, trying to claw a, a, a hold on the world instead of mm. this amazing invitation to gosh, I'm here already, we're here, you're already, you're here already. There's nothing to do for that to be the case. Mm. <sighs> Can mm. we let ourselves go together into the wonder of one another's, our own and one another's presence? Yeah, it's making me think, Justin, of, you know, when I, I don't, I've never seen a, a queen and a queen meet or a king and a queen meet or a king and a king meet or whatever. But I feel like if if you were a king and I was a queen, I wouldn't be like trying to like adjust your clothes or complain about you or something. We would be <laughs> the way we would hold ourselves in each other's presence would be it would be unmeddlesome. It would be allowing. It would be spacious. It would be acknowledging, like when I feel into it, into that space. And this feeling came about when you were talking about the longevity of your friendships and with the people that you went walking with and how over those years I was imagining that really the connection between you, there would have been hundreds of events of your lives that you may or may not know details of, but the connection, the thread between you that connects you is this acknowledgement there's a kind of, there's a part of our relationships that's so essential and so real, which is the part that's this, which is that we are allowing each other to bring the world alive. And in many cases, you bring the world alive for me. Like whoever my friend is brings the world alive for me and I do the same for them. So it's this like mutual, mutuality in the connection. And if I envisage us all as kings and queens, sitting on our thrones, not scrambling into each other's lives and meddling about and doing things, but just allowing from my throne. And being that kind of presence, even when I'm busy, even when I'm doing things, even when I'm getting things done, this feels to me like a, a royal, relatedness like if this is the way I relate 
things get really interesting where people are allowed to be whoever they are. I'm allowed to be whoever I am. And this shimmering and shiningness becomes something that's available to me because I'm not distracted from it. I'm, I'm present to it. So yeah, I'm feeling very like this is a big invitation to my day, to my week, to my life, actually. John Wellwood seems to be a foundational something for me where the truth of it feels very powerful. And just inquiring into this narrative of royalty in, the, in, in this sense of the word, like you said, not some distortion or some big powerful job, but actually a presence, a kind of royal presence that knows its power, knows its goodness, knows its care, and knows its understanding of itself and the other to be this royal, this royalty. Oh, so I think all that is left to say is to say thank you to John Wellwood for being the kind of person who writes this. John Wellwood's, by the way, he died last year and had a lifetime of being a psychotherapist and writing these beautiful things and had an amazing way of working with relationships. So if anyone feels drawn, he's an incredible source of wisdom on the old relationship front. So I want to say thank you to him and thank you, Justin, to you and to everyone for listening to this conversation. I feel very blessed again, yet again, to be here and to be talking in this way. And we will be here next week again on Sunday at nine o'clock UK time on Facebook and we'll be delighted to, to see you again. And thank you anybody for making any comments you have on the Facebook page. It's such a rich source of loveliness that we go through afterwards and see all your comments and respond if there's a response needed or whatever. So thank you for doing that as well. Mm. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Bye bye.